Well hi there folks, I recently fitted out a, a van, converted it into a camper, the video's online, turned out really well, decided it'd be a good idea to have a cool box in it. The previous van I had had a huge 12 volt, 24 volt gas fridge, couldn't afford one of those and there wasn't room in this van anyway. So decided to build one. Now you may have seen these, these cooling modules called Peltier effect modules, less than 20 quid. I wondered if it was possible with a decent bit of insulation to build a fairly decent cool box cheaply using one of these. So this is the story of how I went about it. There are a number of things I'd do differently but as you can see I have got here usable cool box. Not massive but there's room in there. It's tall enough for litre milk cartons and a few beer cans. Put a separator in there so that I can have one side colder than the other. Other thing I've added at the end here was this little thermostat thing because these draw about five or six amps so you wouldn't want it running continuously. Added this little thermostat thing here so that you can tweak it up and down and keep it within a certain temperature range. It turns off. That was probably about five quid. I guess the overall cost probably came out more like 50 quid than, than I was hoping and you could buy a cool box for 100 quid but you'll be lucky if it's got 25mm insulation and it's going to be pumping away likely 5 amps all the time. That's the hot side of the Peltier module and I've added an extra fan on here. I'll go into a bit more detail of that in, inside. I've got added an extra fan and even a couple of extra fins there to help cool this side. On the inside this is the cooling side of the Peltier module. That's the temperature sensor there for the thermostat incidentally. So on the inside as I say this is the cooling side. Added a PC fan there to help distribute the cold air around. Made a separator in here so that I can have one side colder than the other if I want. And it's got masses of insulation. It's got 75mm of insulation of the Ecotherm that I used which is dead cheap for a 8 by 4 sheet. Bit of foam around there obviously helps seal it and it works very well. But I go into more detail about the construction in this huge long 20 minute video. Did masses of tests to see the best way for this to work and so on and basically I'll tell you my conclusions at the end of the video. Here we go. Now the module itself is a tiny module that takes advantage of the fact that when a current passes between two conductors you get heat one side and a cooling effect on the other side and this little tiny module is placed between two, two aluminium heat sinks one side gets cold the other side gets warm and of course the better you can dissipate the warmth and the better insulated the box the better cooling effect you get inside that box so the first step was to build a box and we'll take a look after that at the assembly of the unit that I bought. So first thing I did was buy this 25 litre plastic container. On reflection that was a mistake. I wish I'd built a wooden box. It would have been a darn sight easier. And then I had to set about insulating the box with the 25mm Ecotherm board. Probably ended up using about a third of the board which is less than 10 quid really at the end of the day. I used Sikaflex silicon or no more nails to stick the insulation board to the box and ultimately it was three layers which is three times 25, 75 mil of insulation. It was a tricky shape to actually cover up. If I'd built a wooden box it would have been much easier but I learned as I went along. It seemed a good idea at the time. Added some adhesive aluminium tape to cover up the joins and made a couple of holes for the Peltier module through the box with nice chamfered edges hopefully to encourage a nice smooth airflow into the fins on the aluminium. The hole through so that the cool part will be inside there, the mounting holes are there. Had to sh chamfer it away a little bit to get the right depth. Now as you'll see in a second when I show you the Peltier unit, I bought some aluminium bar which is going to extend the gap by 10 millimeters. So I'm thinking I've got that just about right. Now on the inside I've actually chamfered this nicely so that it will take perfectly the cooling unit. And today I'm pleased to say a little CPU fan that I ordered on eBay turned up early. So 
I'm going to mount that on there to distribute the cool on the inside. Now as I understand it, the, I said the most important thing about cool boxes was insulation. Probably the primary important thing with a Peltier unit is dispersing the heat from the outside which is why I've tried to improve it by chamfering it and so on. Anyway, uh, so that's ready to mount. I'll show you in detail the actual Peltier unit now. Okay, so this is the actual Peltier module. They normally have some printing on to tell you which particular module you've got. Did a bit of a test, connected it to a power supply. H there, that is, this is the hot side, that's pretty important to establish before you assemble it. So that is 40mm by 40mm. This is the cold side, the refrigeration part of the Peltier unit if you want. So obviously the cold side goes on that with some paste in between. And then the idea is that the hot side goes on this side of the heatsink. And the only insulation between the two is this little thin gasket that they supply that's supposed to separate the hot side from the cold side. Well it made sense to me and it's probably beneficial to actually add more insulation there, a little bit more, and the way I'm going to do that is I bought 100ml of 20ml bar so I'm going to cut that so I've got two 40ml squares. They're going to go in there with some conductive paste between. That's going to step this out as you can imagine it's going to step out another 20ml which means there'll be room for a bit of polyurethane foam and some of my ecotherm, if you like, to separate the hot side from the cold side. I mentioned I'm hopefully going to improve the efficiency on the cold side with this little fan that will screw straight on. I think it was about two or three pounds, two pounds fifty, 12 volts. Blowing air into it so that it will, so that it will distribute better around the cool box. And of course, this is the fan that mounts on the outside. And as I understand it, you mount it that way so that it's blowing air into the fins. I had to find a couple of longer screws because the whole of this assembly actually bolts through. Well, no, that's a lie. The whole of that front heat exchanger assembly actually bolts through into a threaded bit there. So I found a couple of screws that will actually fit that to extend that. And of course that's the fan guard that just screws. Which way does it go? It goes that way. That just screws directly on. All you need to do is connect 12 bolts to that and you can ch check the direction of rotation and blow. That just screws in. Right, so yeah, into those holes there actually. Self tappers into that with the fan guard on it. I might actually add a couple of extra fins on the outside of that just for maximum maximum cooling. I've actually got some more conductive paste coming so I can't assemble it today but I'm very excited to probably finish this or at least be able to do some tests on it this weekend. Right so I'll catch you at the next step. So the 40 mil bar that I bought by 10 mil once I cut two pieces off is exactly the right width Hence, I bought 40 mil for me to get two slices out, which will, as you can imagine, bring it out by that much, which isn't bad at all, really. And that allows for another two centimeters of insulation, which isn't bad at all, I think. Well, half an hour later, I'm back having cut my blocks. Must admit, it was much more difficult than I thought hacksawing through 10 mil aluminium bar. And I went slightly offline there, as you can see. This one, this one's a bit better. But I mean, look, that wasn't great. That wasn't great. You can see why they use sawing machines in metalwork shops. But anyway, done. And I've polished the top, the surfaces up a little bit with fine, wet and dry because apparently they have to be really clean. Now the question I have to fathom is, which way do I put the sandwich? Do I put the hot side on the heat sink? like so, and then the two blocks to transfer to the refrigerated part. Oh, incidentally, looking at that, I also miscalculated 
just how much gap I've got but if you see that I've actually got quite a decent gap there for putting insulation in as opposed to the initial little bit of foam but do I sandwich it that way or do I put the blocks there and put the Peltier there so that the cold surface of it is direct to the refrigeration part but the heat has to transfer right through out there that's a difficult equation I might have to do some googling or of course I could also put it in the middle of the sandwich that's a, probably a good compromise put it in the middle of the compromise and then I get the spacing less chance of heat getting into the box that I don't want yeah maybe that's the way to go so, um, as you can see, I wonder if my screws are going to be long enough too. I wonder. Where are they? Um, just about. No, my screws. I need longer screws as well. They're not going to be long enough to go through the plate, through to that, through to the tap hole there. Right. We will work it out. And the other thing I discovered is polythene and plastic are very poor conductors of heat. So the box itself is, even though thin, is actually an insulator from heat or cold. Excellent. Right, well I've got it dry assembled and it was a bit of a nightmare because with my blocks of aluminium in there, the bolts weren't long enough. So I had to root around in my box of junk, found one longer I think they must be BA bolts, found one longer one with a thread that did fit and found another tiny little bolt, don't know whether you can see it, that will actually is long enough to go through and has a nut on the other end. So it's dry assembled, apart from the fan. I'm going to put the fan on, put some power to it and see how it goes. I'm getting the thickness of the insulation between the two was really difficult, which is why there's all this foam on the floor here where I've chipped away to get it try to try and get exactly the right thickness and made a little gasket experimented trying to find the right thickness but I made a little gasket to go between this side and the foam inside bit of squashing so it should be kind of super insulated and not transfer heat from from hot side to cold side but I'm going to give it a try now, see how it feels. Don't go away. Right, well it's up and running. Um, and it definitely is colder on the inside of that plate. Right, well the dry assembled test was a complete waste of time really. So don't bother. Without the conductive paste between, you can't really do a proper test. So I'll skip through that bit. And at this point in my test, the battery charger that I was originally using to power the module for the test failed blew the breakers in my house so I switched to a bigger battery charger which was probably more capable of giving the four or five amps that this module actually needs for a test I've achieved so far something like oh more than a 10 degree temperature difference I decided to improve the insulation added another 25 mil so it's now 75 mil plus as a bit of an experiment I've added another fan there so it, two fans coupled like that appears to give a better blast because somebody pointed out on a, another video that I saw that this kind of fan isn't very efficient on a heat sink because the air swirls out of it and it tends to go in one direction and one side doesn't really get effectively cooled but I must say with the extra insulation I'm getting better results also it might be down to the generic module that I bought because it should be drawing five or six amps and it's only drawing four it's unbranded maybe that was a mistake of buying a cheap kit but guess what I've got I've got another one coming on the way a proper 12706 so I can experiment and try that but it's kind of getting there slowly and this is going down quite fast now the extra insulation definitely helps so as you can see I've got a temperature difference now of 11.5 outside to inside right well a few days later I've got 4.4 degrees on here I don't think that's very accurate I think it's about two degree reads about two degrees under but 4.4 which is pretty damn good and I have got stuff in it anyway which helped me but also it's pretty much finished what have I done well I did lots of research about whether fans should suck and blow I had one fan blowing 
one fan sucking, two fans blowing, two fans sucking. Likewise, the internal cool side, I had the fan sucking and blowing and no fan. Tests went on for days and days and I concluded that two fan sucking was best, which is why I've got two hooked up here. And the fan on the inside, I think, and I can't remember, I'll look at it in a second. Fan on the inside, I think is sucking. Added another 25mm of insulation, so there's now 100mm around the sides and the base. There's only 50mm on the top, I'm probably going to put another 25 on that and make it 75, but cold air sinks, so it seems logical to me to have a better insulated base than the lid. And incidentally, the reason I chose a chest freezer type is you don't lose as much cool air when you take the lid off with fridges that open like that. All the cold air rushes out when you open the fridge. What else to say? Ah, the design of it. I made a little petition, so if you want it really cold on one side, can you see in there? Yeah. If you want it really cold on one side, you can put a little petition in, and maybe I'll put some holes in it, say uh, up to about here, so that some of the cold air can go through, and you'll have one side that's cooler than the other side. Also added a little bit of foam strip here, because the seal around the top is important. It's lovely and cold in there now, but... I did some tests with it empty and, and it seemed to be losing heat very quickly but of course you've got to keep some products inside which is why I've got loads of junk in there at the minute just to, for my tests. And the other thing I did at huge expense, £3.50, was buy this little temperature regulator. Now bearing in mind that these, these Peltier units draw 4 amps and putting that in perspective that's about the same as say a headlight bulb, one headlight bulb, that is quite a current draw so you wouldn't want to leave this running full time. The idea of this is of course the same as a thermostat in a fridge, once it reaches a certain temperature it will switch off. Now this is dead easy to use, I, there, it comes with comes with good instructions but in fact basically you set an upper and a lower temperature. The way I can demo it here, at the moment I haven't got the sensor installed obviously I'm going to have to make a little hole poke that through somewhere so that that's measuring the temperature inside but just to demo how it works you can set an upper and a lower temperature I've got it set for example at 7 and 10 the idea being I can demo this with the help of this ice lolly if I put this that, that's actually showing the current temperature because it's outside it's showing 21 22 very responsive too. But if I put, put it underneath this ice lolly you'll see that will rapidly go down. And when it hits 7, imagine if it was inside, once the temperature inside the box got down to 7, as you'll see, I might speed this up a little bit, like so it stopped. Now one drawback with this type of cooling module is there is a max differential you can achieve depending on the internal and external temperatures so if you're in a warm climate you won't get it down as low as if you're in a colder climate. So it swings around about 500 quid for a compressor type fridge which will of course give you really low temperatures whereas this has actually worked out at about 50 quid which is as I said at the start of this half the price of a commercial cool box and probably with all this insulation a lot more efficient. Anyway hope you haven't found this too boring I found it quite an interesting exercise. If I was going to do it all again from the beginning I wouldn't buy a plastic case to put it in I'd just build a wooden box I'd buy a better module I've seen some for not much more money I've seen some that would probably be more efficient but all in all I think it's going to do the job it's been fun it kept me busy for a couple of weeks and I learned something about these kind of modules anyway that is it for now if you did find it useful or interesting please give it a like and maybe even subscribe and why not check out some of the other vids on my channel there's all kinds of stuff I'm sure there'll be something there you'll find interesting but that's it for now happy traveling and hopefully I'll catch you all again soon Bye for now.